It is a fundamental human right to be able to reach and discover your true, full potential, regardless of a natural need. And what could be more natural than menstruation? I know that periods aren't the most common topic to be obsessed or even slightly passionate about, but my passion for periods comes from a very personal space. Growing up in Sri Lanka, I often witnessed my aunts and cousins constantly hiding their period products under clothing compartments and mattresses, and rarely speaking of the topic, even if at all, almost as if the topic itself was illegal. Witnessing these behaviors and then immigrating to the United States a few years later at the age of eight, I noticed these same exact behaviors translate to the communities here. In elementary school and middle school, and even in high school, I saw girls having to hide their period products when they went to the bathroom, under their sleeves, under their, their bags, and even in little makeup bags as they went to the bathroom. And it was mind-blowing to see these same behaviors translate to our community here, even though it would translate to my home, Sri Lanka, 9,782 miles away from where I'm standing today. Witnessing these behaviors in elementary school, and even as a young girl, I realized, what could I do? How could a young girl like me in elementary school have any impact on an issue affecting us all? And then in middle school, I noticed these same behaviors trans into the communities, and in high school, I realized it was finally time to take action and to do something about it. Starting seeing this, I started a community service project called Hygiene for Women. Hygiene for Women was a project that I started in my backyard where I would you know, bake goods and upon baking these goods, I would go to my family's orchid shop and sell them and then collect those funds and then buy hygiene products and have packing events where my aunt, my parents, and my siblings would gather together and we would pack little bags, as you can see here, in, with period products and pads and tampons and then donate them to the Lotus House, Miami Rescue Mission, and even Camilo's House here in South Florida. Upon doing so, I realized this was such a large issue and it had to be addressed on a larger scale. I began reaching out to different organizations within Coconut Grove and South Florida to see what they were doing to address these concerns. And I noticed that none of them openly and sustainably addressed menstrual hygiene products. And I noticed that a lot of homeless women were using toilet paper, brown paper grocery bags, socks, and all sorts of unnecessary, unsanitary goods for their period products. Oftentimes, homeless women have to choose between food or tampons because most of these organizations would only provide them with the necessary goods such as like shelter, such as food, and even clothes, but not openly sustainably for period products. And most of all, within individuals experiencing homelessness within South Florida, 67% of them have been to be women. Upon doing even more research, I noticed that a lot of these organizations didn't support them, either due to lack of funds or lack of displayed need, which caused an endless cycle of organizations not prioritizing menstrual hygiene, women were not feeling confident to stand up for these goods, and it caused an unaddressed need for them not being able to get these goods, leaving women and their periods completely unaddressed. And this ongoing cycle was not even just in Coconut Grove and in South Florida, it was throughout the world, and it was such a large issue that I realized I I couldn't tackle it on alone. So, if women were, are experiencing their periods on a monthly basis, from the average of age 12 to 52, which happens to be an average of 40 years of their life, why is it such a hush topic? And in discovering this, and in starting a program within Hygiene for Women, which had continued on even, th even after high school, where we would advocate service and educate those within our community and within high school and middle school members, I realized that we needed to break this ongoing cycle. And one of the number one ways that we were able to address this was through women's empowerment. And although there's lots of organizations working to provide opportunities with education and job opportunities for women, none of them openly and sustainably supported menstrual hygiene. And this caused periods to not be addressed, which needed to essentially be so. Did you know that the number one reason that girls miss school in developing countries is due to their period? They would, miss period, they would miss school because they didn't have the necessary funds or the necessary products to wear, which caused them to not be able to go to school due to either a lack of embarrassment or even a lack of just not being able to focus entirely. Specifically in Kenya, an average of 
4.9 school days were missed because of girls not being able to have the necessary products, which was 25% of one school month. And this was entirely based on the taboo surrounding periods entirely, and if these things are not addressed, then this is going to be an ongoing cycle. In India, 70% of reproductive diseases are caused due to a lack of education and a lack of knowledge in general around menstrual, uh, menstrual hygiene, and it would cause even of like a lack of mental mortality and even like various diseases that would escalate because girls were not able to handle their periods entirely. Now there are two aspects that come into play within mental and physical. Mental, there's like the self-conscious aspect that girls would feel as they first initially develop their periods. And then physically there is like the body odors, menstrual cramps, um, and then not being able to handle these concerns would result in them having larger diseases, such as toxic shock syndrome. Whereas mentally, they would have to undergo, like, like be self-conscious within those around them and have to worry about the next phase of their life, which was be either becoming a mother or a wife. Now, to explain in here where another aspect within hygiene for women that we soon undertook as I um, graduated high school was starting a program where we would go into middle schools and late elementary schools, but middle, uh, late elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools where we would talk to a number of classrooms, we would go into a number of classrooms and speak with individuals about menstrual hygiene and how it was such a normal topic and to simply just to eradicate the taboo surrounding the topic. We would go in and the girls and boys would feel extremely self-conscious when the topic itself came up, almost as if they simply wanted to leave the classroom. And upon reaching out to other high schools, elementary schools, we discovered that the topic itself was rarely discussed because of the sense of awkwardness that some of you may be even feeling here today, as it's not a topic of conversation, typically. And upon doing even more research, we reached out to programs such as HIP, which would typically go into classrooms and teach the boys and the girls the ongoing cycles within later on in their life, but most times they would separate the girls from the boys, which would cause them to cause even more of a stigma, and girls would rarely feel the open conversation to be able to discuss it among themselves. Now, the discomfort that some of you may be feeling today is completely normal, as this is a womanly stemmed topic itself, and it's not a very cleanly one at that. But to be able to eradicate this taboo and the stigma around it, it's something that we need to all work on doing together. When you think of essential needs for men, what do you think of? Rogaine and Viagra are known to be the two top essential needs for men, and it's, they're not taxed. Meanwhile, period products are. 16,000 or more period products are necessary for women in her life, and this is from the smaller scale itself. In the US, 20% of government jobs are held by women, but 80% are held by men. So if we don't all collectively work on addressing the issue together, then we'll still be where we are today. And one of the ways that we can acknowledge and address this issue is by openly discussing it, and most of all, by having an open mind. Now, women need to feel more confident and dignified, whereas within the topic itself, or even when they're on it. So, how can we make a change right now? Being mindful and the power of language has astounding effects on us all. And it's one step as to how we can address this issue today. So, to the men, to the uncles, to the brothers that are sitting among us, please be accepting, please be loving, please be supportive and compassionate. Let's create a safe space and start a conversation today. Why are we so afraid to talk about a topic so natural? Thank you.